Hello everyone and welcome back to That Adventure Life. I am Dustin. And I'm B. And we are here for another awesome adventure at Kodachrome Basin State Park. Hey, I got through the name pretty clean that time. <laughs> uh, today we will be hiking the Angel Angel's Pal Palace Trail. Angel Pal Angel's Palace Trail. They, everything here is uh, tongue twister, but um, this one is pretty short. It's only about what? I think it's 1.6 miles. Uh, it's supposed to be easy. Um, might be a little bit more difficult now with the snow cover, but it's it should be a pretty short trail, and it's recommended by the ranger for photographers because of the view. So um, we're gonna check it out first, okay? You guys ready? Let's do it. As V said before, even though this trail is rated easy, if you're doing it in the snow, it may lean a little bit more towards the moderate side. You're definitely going to want to bring some spikes because there are a couple of hills that were covered with ice and getting up them without the spikes would be quite a challenge. Even with the hills, this trail does not have a whole lot of climbing and you can expect to gain right around 226 feet. Not only did the trail have a lot of snow on it, but it had quite a bit of mud as well. And this is the famous red dirt that stains everything, so you're not going to want to wear your favorite pristine pair of shoes to do this hike. But on the other side of things, maybe you can consider the red stains a souvenir from your visit. It's a little bit too frozen over at the moment, but I bet that this could be a waterfall during certain times of the year, and that would be pretty darn cool to see when it was going. With all this snow, uh, something's bound to happen eventually, but not today. Here we have one of the hills that gives this trail the little bit of elevation gain that it has. We were glad that this one didn't have any snow or ice on it because it's really narrow and that would have made it way more challenging. Another thing that we liked about this trail, as well as the other hike that we did in the park, is how well marked everything is. Even though this trail was fairly straightforward and didn't take us too far out into the wilderness, it was good to know that we were still going in the right direction. Much like in the case of Bryce Canyon, the snow really takes the beauty of Kodachrome Basin State Park to another level. It really helps to saturate the greens and reds of the surrounding mountains and it adds a lot of contrast as well. After climbing to the top of a fairly simple hill, the trail will open up to a really neat slick rock area. After stepping through this slot, you're going to get a really expansive view of not only the slot that you just came through, but the backside of the park as well. Soon we reach this spot, which some might consider tricky, especially if they don't have spikes on. To get to the next part of the trail, you need to make your way up this short climb. It was a little bit slippery, and as you can see, there's a strip down the middle that was solid ice. But since we did have our spikes on, we made fairly easy work out of it. Welcome to the second half of the trail, and this is where things get a little bit interesting. We've done lollipop loop trails in the past, which is an out and back trail with a little loop at the end. But this is an out and back trail with two small loops at the end, so I'm not sure what to call it. If you have an idea, let us know in the comments below. After making your way past this large boulder, you're going to start on the first of the two small loops. From here, you'll start to get fantastic views of the west side of the park, as well as the basin campground. And we even spotted our Jeep in the parking lot. The trail snaked its way along the cliffside, giving plenty of opportunities for panoramic views and photo ops. One of the things that we noticed just a little ways down the trail was what appeared to be a narrow ridge line. These are the kinds of things that for some reason make us happy, so we headed off in that direction to check it out. The ridge started off nice and wide, but the further that you got in, the more narrow that it became. This definitely took a fairly mellow trail and made it a whole lot more exciting. 
This ridgeline is not necessary to do to get to the next part of the trail, so if you have a fear of heights, I would definitely skip this. But if you don't have a fear of heights, the views from up here made this one of our favorite parts of the trail. So at one section of the loop, there is this little bonus ridgeline that you can go out on, but as you can see, it's a little bit spicy. There are sections that are only about two feet wide, I'd say, so. But smaller even. Yeah, maybe even smaller. So, and it's a long ways down on both sides, so. It is steep, so don't fall. Yeah, if you do this, please uh, be careful because, uh, yeah, it's skinny. And if you go in the winter, make sure you wear your crampons because it's get really icy and you don't want to fall down. Yeah, the little bit of extra snow will make it extra slippery. After leaving the ridgeline, you're going to continue on straight ahead to finish the first of the two loops. After climbing this hill, you can either make a left to head back to the car, or you can make a right to continue on to the second loop. The trail eventually curves off to the right and heads back across the slick rock. This time you're on the opposite side of the toadstools from when you hiked in. These formations really are fascinating and you can definitely tell that V was enjoying them. This loop is a little bit longer than the first one and it also takes you to some very beautiful viewpoints. If you have time to do both loops, I would highly recommend doing it. Each of them have their own unique things that make them pretty cool. Heading out on this second ridge gave us a good look at just how high up that first spicy ridge really was. If you remember that spicy ridge that we were talking about, this is it right here. So as you can see, it's quite a ways down and you definitely don't want to fall. And you know what else we found? Another spicy narrow ridge. <laughs> this one is not as bad. It's a, well, it is small, but it's not as steep. Yeah, you, def you don't want to fall from this one either, but... Um, not as spicy. It's not. It's like, it's like mild salsa spicy, this one. That one is more caliente. From the cliffs and ridges of this part of the trail, you can also see another trail in the park, which is known as the Grand Parade Trail, which unfortunately we did not have time to do. You know what's better than two somewhat sketchy ledges? Three. Say hi, hon. <laughs> This is another good one here. All, the good thing about all of these is just the view that you get from them. I mean, this is crazy. Over here, you can see the road. This is the road that you came in from the park. Excuse my missed point there. Sometimes it's hard to look at where my finger is and where it is in relation on the camera. But yeah, check out the view. It's beautiful. Pretty amazing. I think it's more, it's more beautiful in the winter. Oh, this place is hands down more beautiful in the snow for sure. I think the snow really enhances like the color, the red will become a lot more rich. Absolutely. I feel like when we were here in the summer, it's more washed out. Yeah, yeah, it seemed like the colors are a little bit more muted and now they're like really a vibrant red and orange color. Unfortunately, that was the last ridge on the trail, but there was still plenty of beauty to be seen. One of which is this big spire that you can see in the back corner of the trail. This makes for a pretty neat photo op, and it also marks the furthest point of the trail. After this, you're going to start heading back. After this little tricky iced over climb, we noticed that one of the trail markers had fallen over, so V attempted to fix it. And she succeeded. We once again passed by the backside of that slick rock section that we enjoyed so much. And then we noticed there was a little bit of a sneaky fork. So we had a decision to make whether to take it or not. So we finished one of the big loop on Angel's Palace Trail. So we came from over there, if you see the little trail site right there, that's the end of the loop. And then you just kind of walk back here. And this is where uh, we have a little shortcut. Uh, if you're upward, you can climb up this little rock ledge area. It's not that difficult. And then we'll, it'll take us back 
to one of the scenic viewpoints that we did before. So to go back, we're gonna go that way to start the trails, uh, the keep going on the Andrews Palace Trail, we're gonna go that way. If you are not up for the climb, you can always go the same way that you came in. So which means going around that block and it's kind of loops you back and there would be a little trail marker. Yeah, and then you'd end up actually over by this rock over here, the big, the big guy here, I'll show you. This guy right there. So it just kind of loop around and then it's gonna lead you back onto that little trail and go this way. So we'll just cut out that little short path. This put us back at the small iced over climb that we did to get to the two loops. But this time we noticed that there was a little way to go around it on the left side. After the down climb, you are back on the out and back trail and you're on your way back to the trailhead. Even though this trail is pretty short, you're going to want to leave yourself plenty of time to take in the views and enjoy it. We are notoriously slow hikers, and that doesn't help when we're trying to hit several trails in a day. But what's the point of being out in nature if you're not going to bask in all of its glory? The trail markers do continue on the way down, even though it would be pretty hard to mess this trail up at this point. After making it down this last steep hill, it is pretty much a smooth, but slightly muddy walk all the way back to the car. After doing this hike, we can confidently say that Kodachrome Basin State Park is definitely an underrated state park. And it is more than worth a visit the next time that you are in the area. Alrighty, well that was the Angel's Palace Trail, which uh, I think blew away my expectations. I was just thinking, oh, this is gonna be a cute little trail. A lot of beautiful scenic viewpoints. It took us three hours for like <laughs> a mile, 1.6 mile-ish. We, I mean, we wander off trails and everything, but we spent a lot of time taking pictures. You're not gonna get any world records out of us ever, that's for sure. It's, it's beautiful though, as you, we definitely, it's not, I would say it's not as easy as it sounds. It's actually, I would consider it's more like the easy moderate. Yeah, especially if you want to go out on those ridges. There, yeah, there are a couple of sections, especially in the snow. Uh, it's steep and it's icy, so, and then you're like on the little ledge. Uh, and then there's a couple of clam sections with slippery ice over, so. That could be a little stretchy and, you know, a little sketchy for beginners or people who are not used to hiking. Yeah, definitely bring your spikes if you're going to do this in the snow. So, um, yeah. We we'll definitely love this trail. So we're going to go off to our next ones and then we'll see you guys in, on the next video. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to uh, gently click that like button and, uh, you know, go ahead and subscribe too. Just click the like button. Just don't do it for whatever that he said. Don't, don't like flick your screen. That would hurt. Like, you know, I mean, you know, use some comments. I, I think they got this. Okay, we got it. Okay. All right. We're off to the next one. Bye. Bye.